thanks so much for joining us here on Bloomberg Television. There's pleasure. so much happening right now, obviously, in the world, and the bond market is telling us, uh, the bond market is telling us that uh, investors are much more, uh, you know, risk averse right now. They're worried about the trade war with uh, China and the United States, uh, and in Europe, there doesn't seem to be any consensus on leadership for the new post and stimulus, the prospect for stimulus. Let's start with Europe. What, what is your take following, of course, the EU elections and the summit? Well, f first of all, I would say that uh, we have the reflection at the level of Europe as a whole, uh, the Parliament of the European Union, of what happens in every country, if I may, weakening of the traditional uh, sensitivities that were responsible on the right and on the left side of the coin of uh, running the business and the affairs, and uh, uh, emergence of new forces. Uh, I see clearly the uh, Greens as one of the new forces, the Liberals in, at the level of the European Parliament, which means more or less the centre, uh, uh, also as a new uh, emerging force, uh, not emerging, but a new force of importance. And then, of course, you have also the frustration of a part of the population which is expressed in other sensitivities. So we have really, I would say, democracy in action at the level of Europe as a whole. Uh, certainly not, uh, you know, a, a populist triumph uh, which would uh, be aiming at demolishing Europe, but the normal democratic representation of the new sensitivities. I think it's good. Now, the horse trading is in full swing, of course, for yeah. the ECB president and ECB president as well. Um, what are the qualities, from your assessment as the former ECB president, what are the qualities, given the turmoil these days that we're seeing, uh, that the new ECB president must have? I would say, uh, first of all, experience, uh, having uh, you know a good understanding of the way, uh, not only Europe and the euro area in particular, but also the entire world functions, and certainly the capacity to decide uh, and to be a leader. Uh, I think that uh, uh, all the persons that are mentioned today have these characteristics, these uh, these qualities, quote unquote. Uh, but, of course, there is uh, also something which is very important and which would be for all of them, uh, whoever is chosen, uh, to say, I, was, I had a previous position which was such and such, I was the governor of such and such a central bank, now uh, I am very honored by uh, the confidence of the uh, heads of state and government. I would be the president of the ECB, which is, of course, a job of a different nature. Don't be surprised if I'm not exactly the same, because I was governor of a national central bank. I uh, become governor of the or president of the of the ECB. But again, uh, I think that uh, all the persons that are uh, presently, uh, I would say, mentioned. Uh, have the c capacity to... But, but then you also have polarizing characters like the Bundesbank head, Weizmann. Weiss, um, he's more of a hawk. Uh, is, and not, he's kind of divisive to the southern governments. Is he somebody that would to pick up the mantle from Draghi in these times? We will see exactly what happens. Again, uh, let's not forget, first of all, that it is a decision which is taken by the heads of state and government. Second, that it is also uh, something which uh, uh, drives you to be the head of a governing council. And uh, all the decisions are decisions of a college. Uh, uh, and uh, you need a simple majority of that college for any decision. That's also something which is very important. And uh, again, I, I take it that uh, to bet on a dramatic change of the policy of the central banks, whoever is appointed, would be uh, absolutely wrong bet. The ECB has enormous responsibility, has been always up to its responsibility in very uh, terrible, terrible period of time that I have had myself to cope with in 07, 08, 09, 10, yeah. 11. My successor, Mario Draghi, has enormous challenges over uh, his eight years. And I take it that the ECB always proved to be up to its responsibility over time. Then what's your take on the prospect or the need for new stimulus at a time when expectations for inflation are plunging? Well, again, we will see exactly uh, what happens. It's clear that the central bank is doing quite a lot 
and it is the fiscal side of the coin that would probably be at stake. And I have to say also, we have something which is true in Europe, true in Japan, we are in Japan, true in the US also, which is that the bargaining power of labor has considerably weakened. One of the problems of the central banks is that inflation is too low because unit labor costs are moving too slowly and they are not dynamic enough. In particular, even in countries with full employment, Japan, Germany, and the US. So I would hope that we would have a more dynamism on the side of this wages and salaries increases. How dire is the global economy given the prospect for a full-fledged trade war? Uh, we had a guest on Bloomberg Television from Morgan Stanley earlier today out of Beijing saying if this goes full-blown trade war, the Fed goes to zero rates, we go into re global recession by the spring of 2020. Are you as... I as hope Mr. that those who are in charge are not bizarre enough in their behavior to create such a catastrophe. It's absolutely clear that if we have a drama in the relationship, a trade relationship between the US and China, we will have a, a negative sum game of first magnitude at the level of the US, at the level of China, at the level of the entire global economy. And I, I would not bet on such a stupid behavior uh, coming from those who are in charge. So I understand pretty well that uh, uh, we have a pessimistic environment now. The bond market is clear. Some voices are uh, making precisely the assumption that the worst is for sure. I'm not making that assumption myself, mm -hmm. but we will see.